we are here today for training on hydrocarbon refrigerants. And we're gonna look at using R290 and R600A in light commercial refrigeration equipment. Next, we'll talk about some of the things that we can do while we're working on these systems to make sure that we stay safe. First thing we want to do is just use common sense and remember that we have a flammable refrigerant inside the system. One of the biggest recommendations that we try to give is to develop a work procedure so that you do the same thing on every system. Just pretend like every single system you approach has a flammable refrigerant inside and then you'll always be safe. So hydrocarbon refrigerants do not have an odor in them, so you can't just smell if there's a leak in that system. We always wanna make sure we have a hydrocarbon gas detector on hand to be able to detect that leak for us. So the first thing you should always do when approaching one of these systems is use that gas detector to see if there's a leak. And then if there is hydrocarbon gas in that system, leave that detector running the entire time so that you always know what's going on in your workspace. Another problem that we see out there is with some illegal refrigerants or with just a refrigerant that's put into a system where it shouldn't necessarily be. So that's why we recommend using a work procedure that treats every job like it has a flammable refrigerant inside. You'll never be surprised by an illegal refrigerant and you'll always be safe if it turns out that there is a flammable refrigerant inside that system. This is probably the most important part of the entire presentation. This chart right here tells us why it's dangerous to be working in specific areas of that cabinet and in specific areas on the job. So looking at the right side of this chart, we'll focus on the R290. So for R290, you can see that there's a lower flammability limit of 2.1% and an upper flammability limit of 9.5%. What this means is that the percentage of R290 in the atmosphere of your space needs to be between 2.1% and 9.5% for it to be flammable. So if we could fill up the room that we're in right now, if we could seal it off and fill it up with R290, but we just fill it up to 1.5%, and we have it equally dispersed through our entire atmosphere, we would not have enough R290 in that space to create an explosion. Now, if we could do the same thing and we could seal off the space that we're in and then fill it up with R290 and have it equally dispersed through our space, but it's at 12%, we'd have too much R290 or too much propane in that space to actually cause an ignition. So we need to be between that 2.1% and that 9.5%. So if you took a space, as an example, that is five feet by five feet by six feet, and you could leak the entire 5.3 ounce charge into that space, you'd get to about 1.85% R290 in that space. So that space is too big to create a flammable atmosphere. So you really need to be a little bit smaller than that to have the potential for flammable atmosphere. What's smaller than a five foot by five foot by six foot space? is probably the size of the inside of your cabinet. So the inside of the cabinet is really, at least potentially, the most dangerous place on your job site. Remember the R290 is heavier than air, however, so it's gonna sink down to the bottom. So if you did have a leak inside that cabinet, it may be between that percentage at one point, and then it may not be. It may sink down to the bottom. And you may open up the door and then have a leak, and as soon as you do that, then you may end up in that percentage, but then it may blow away from the ventilation. The most important thing to remember is to always have ventilation and to always be using your hydrocarbon gas detector so that you know what's going on in your worksite. Some more general precautions for service of this equipment. Always conduct a risk assessment to determine whether it's appropriate to use a flammable refrigerant in that workspace. The workspace must be free of any sources of potential sparking or ignition. Also make sure that there's a fire extinguisher in your work area just in case. Our recommendation, as far as your workspace, is to have at least a 10-foot radius around the equipment that's being worked on that is completely free of any potentially sparking equipment. So no pilot lights, no light switches, no switches of any sort that could potentially produce a spark. Some more precautions for service. PPE on these jobs, just like any job, but especially important for working on equipment with R290 or R600A. Also, again, we'll repeat the hydrocarbon gas detector, probably the most important piece of equipment on your job site. And maybe second to that is having good ventilation. So having an R290 approved fan, it's gonna provide airflow across that work site. Also, make sure that you have tools that are certified for working on an R290 system. This can be anything from an anti-static electricity tag to spark-free tools, to things like vacuum pumps and recovery machines that are approved for an R290 environment. Again, make sure that all of your equipment is designed to be used on R290 systems and in an environment where there's potentially R290 gas. So again, in summary, you wanna make sure that all of the equipment that you're using on that job site is designed for R290 equipment and to be in an environment where there's potentially R290 that has leaked out of that equipment. A recovery machine is another piece of equipment that you wanna make sure is designed for use with an R290 system. 
You can use an R290 approved recovery machine for your older traditional refrigerants like R134A and R404, but you can't use the older recovery machine that you already have for R290 because it's gonna have things like switches and pressure controls and relays that are potentially spark producing. You always wanna make sure that you have the appropriate R290 recovery cylinder because these gases are gonna have different densities and they're gonna react with the seals and other components like that on the cylinder differently. You can also fill them to different amounts than with the traditional refrigerants like R134 and R404. It's very important to have the correct cylinder if you do have to recover this gas. You also want to check all your local transport codes because they're different everywhere before you move this gas. Finally here we'll look at the replacement of the electrical components in that system. So the main point of this portion of this chart is thinking back to when we mentioned that all of the components have to be approved per the IEC standard for electrical components to make sure that nothing is potentially spark producing. So as you work on these systems, remember to use your combustible gas detector to check your work environment, check the inside of the cabinet, then unplug the system. Eventually, all these electrical components will be available in the aftermarket, but if you can't find it, always just go back to the OEM to make sure that you have a safe part that's not spark producing and is approved per those IEC standards. Just to reiterate what we looked at before, the inside of the cabinet is really the area where you have the most potential for creating a flammable atmosphere based on the size of the inside of the cabinet. But don't forget on the external portion of the cabinet, it's gonna be different in every single work environment. So we always recommend using the hydrocarbon gas detector to check your environment on the inside and the outside of the cabinet. And we always recommend leaving the hydrocarbon gas detector running on the ground right in front of your work site for the entire time that you're working on that cabinet. It's important to remember when working on these systems that the compressor usually doesn't just fail. It's usually a system problem that causes the compressor failure. So we definitely want you to make sure to look at the entire system and make sure that you find what caused the compressor failure or that you find what failed and it's actually still a good compressor. We don't want you to put all the extra time into taking all the precautions involved with working on an R290 system and the compressor didn't need changed or you end up having to come right back and change out another failed compressor because it's truly a system problem that's causing the issue. Some of the following items are things you may look for when checking the system. As we get ready to look at a compressor replacement, just keep some of the following most important details in mind. The hydrocarbon gas detector is probably the most important piece of equipment on your job site. Always make sure to sweep the site and the inside of the cabinet before your work and leave the hydrocarbon gas detector to low level the entire operation. We also want to use a safety placard. Since we have flammable refrigerants in these systems, you want everyone else around your job site to know that you're working on a flammable refrigerant. Also, finally, make sure that you have ventilation to your job site. You want to have that fan, preferably an R290 proof fan right there on your job site. In case you do have a leak, it can blow that R290 away. If it's not an R290 proof fan, just make sure to have it a good distance away and keep it outside of that 10 foot radius where we don't want to have anything potentially spark producing. Next up, we have an R290 compressor replacement demonstration. We're gonna go over all the steps that we've just looked at to stay safe when working on these systems. <laughs> 